Hey, what's up guys? My name is Matt. This is Cali 2A. I wanted to do a new video for you guys reloading 100 rounds of 9mm ammunition. I posted one video, it was just a quick 60 second video about two months ago, which got a lot of good feedback. There were a lot of questions regarding some of the things that I do, why I do things that I do. Um, there was some, you know, just some people that Maybe they have absolutely no clue and have no experience whatsoever when it comes to reloading ammunition. And they had a lot of good questions. So that's what this video is for, just to go more in depth. There'll be a little bit of a longer video, you know, showing more detailed of what it is that I'm doing when I'm reloading my nine millimeter ammunition. Also, real quick, please, 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 make sure you guys like and comment on these videos, share the videos, subscribe. Um, even if you just leave a comment with thumbs up, you know, it, it helps get past this algorithm that YouTube has. I'm noticing being a new channel, YouTube does not like firearms. <laughs> Anything firearms related, it's really hard to get past the algorithm and get these videos out there into people's recommendations. The reason I say that is because I do plan on doing other videos that are more, for lack of better words, politically driven as far as our Second Amendment rights go. So I do want to make sure that those videos get recommended for other people to see them. My goal with those videos is to kind of grasp the attention of the less educated, um, you know, people that may have been led astray when it comes to our Second Amendment rights, people that are more on the side of gun control. Uh, a lot of those people, they're literally only on these on the side of gun control because it's just a lack of knowledge um, or they've been fed a bunch of false information. So please, again, be sure to like, subscribe, share. I know it's so cliche to hear that on every YouTube channel, but it's the most important thing that you guys can do as viewers when it comes to the firearms world. So please do that. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into it. I'll try to make this video as quick as possible and try not to bore you guys. But uh, again, this is just for the people that wanted the detailed version. So let's jump right into it. All right, guys, first things first, I'm gonna go over some of the tools that I use and some of the things that you would need if you were looking to get into reloading ammunition. One is a flip tray. This is a cheap plastic one, Hornady one that I bought. What this is, is for the primers. When I put the primers in here, one side has ridges on it. I'll pour the primers in here. I can shake it around. It'll make all the primers flip and face one direction. Then I'll put this on here on top. I'll flip it over and then I'll take this one off and I'll be able to pick up all of my primers with the primer tube. And I'll show you guys that in a minute. Another thing you'll need is digital calipers. This is just a cheap pair that I got from Amazon. I don't know, they're 20 or 30 bucks. And this is going to be to check my overall length of my cartridge once I'm done loading. And I'll show you that. Another thing you'll need is a grain scale. This is just a Frankfurt Arsenal. And this will be to weigh the powder once I drop it into the casing. And it comes with a little tray here that I could put the powder in and weigh it. And I'll show you that. Another thing you'll need is a case gauge. This will be for the finished casing. I'll drop the bullet in there. As long as it goes in smooth, then I'll know that my bullet should chamber any nine millimeter handgun just fine. Basically acts as the same size as a barrel on a nine millimeter handgun. So if the bullet, the finished bullet can go in here and sit flush and come out smoothly, then you know your bullet's good size. Another thing that I use is this tumbler media additive. I put this in my media tumbler. Inside my media tumbler, I have crushed walnut shells and I'll add this to it for my final tumble of my brass to get it nice and shiny and clean. Another thing, one shot lubricant. I don't care if you don't like using this. I don't care if you think it's necessary. I use it, I've always used it, I've tried loading 9mm ammunition without using it. There is a difference. If you load up 1,000 rounds, 2,000 rounds in one day, your shoulder's gonna feel it. I don't care how tough you are or how much you work out, you're gonna feel it in your shoulder when you load that much ammunition in one day. Using this will make your life a lot easier. Just use it, it's not gonna hurt anything. All right guys, I got three piles of casings here. This is a representation of 
my step-by-step -step process when it comes to cleaning my brass. This pile is fresh from the range, it's dirty, it's mixed in with other calibers. What I'll do is come home from the range and I'll just grab a big handful and throw it in my tumbler and I'll run it for about 30 minutes just to get it a little bit cleaner so I can inspect the casings. When I'm inspecting, I'm making sure that it's nine millimeter. I'm making sure that it's only brass and not steel. I'm also checking for cracks and dings. I found this one this morning when I was inspecting. There's a crack in there. I don't want to load that and blow one of my fingers off when I go to try and chamber it and shoot it. That's the purpose of inspecting. After inspecting, I'll have a pile like this. I know it's all nine millimeter, it's all brass. None of it has any cracks or anything in it. This is ready to tumble a final time. When I go to tumble it that last time, I'll add my additive. This will clean it thoroughly it'll polish it and make it look a lot better and i'll do that for maybe two hours three hours depending on how dirty the casings are and this is what comes out nice clean ready to reload brass all right this is my media tumbler it's just a cheap tumbler from harbor freight i don't remember what i paid for it 40 or 50 bucks maybe and it is filled with fresh walnut shells which is this box down here all right, today I'm gonna use these Fiocchi small pistol primers. I got a really good deal on these. Uh, I forget what I paid, it's 1,500 of them. And I think it was around 100 bucks. So for today's standards and today's prices, I basically got about 500 rounds for free. So I grabbed a few boxes of those. Anyways, so that's what I'm gonna use. I got my flip tray here. So there's 150 rounds in these packs, but I'm only gonna run 100 of them. So I'll carefully dump them in this tray. All right, I got my primers and my flip tray, and they're all facing different directions. So now I just shake it. Now they're all facing the same exact direction. And I'll take my top to my flip tray, and I flip it. Now they're all facing the same right side up, ready to pick up with my primer tube. All right, now the fun part. I'm going to take my primer tube, I'm going to pick every one of them up. All right, now I got all my primers in my primer tube. Drop them in here on the press. Take this out. Put this rod back in. This right here is my low primer indicator. Once I put this rod in here, as I use the primers and they go down, eventually this rod right here will make contact with this and lets me know that I have almost no primers left. And that's just to give me a warning so I don't try and drop powder into a casing that has no primer in it. And then one, I have an incomplete round. And not only that, but then my powder can go everywhere when it comes out of the bottom where the primer pocket is on the casing. All right, guys. So if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you already have your Dillon press, it's already set up, you have your dies set and everything else, and you're just looking for another perspective of somebody else who reloads. If you have not, and you have a brand new press or you're considering buying one, I highly recommend going to the Dillon website and watching their step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set your dies. I'm not going to go into that video, we'll be here all day. I'm just going through my process. One thing I do, if it's been a while since I've reloaded, if I happen to change calibers or anything like that, one thing that I need to do is I take an old casing that has a spent primer in it and I'll run it through my powder drop just to double check that I'm getting the proper powder drop or if I need to make any adjustments. So I'm gonna do that now. I just take this, put it in my press, spin it once to the powder drop side. I've got powder in there. I'm set at 4.7 grains, which 4.7 grains is perfect for me. I'm not doing any type of precision shooting or anything like that, obviously with nine millimeter. I'm not doing any competition shooting. I literally plink and train for self-defense. That's it. As you can see, I'm using tight group. I've literally never used any other pistol powder for nine millimeter. This is literally the only powder I've ever used. I've always been able to get a hold of these four pound jugs. It was suggested to me 
that's what I run. It's pretty clean, so that's what I use. And today I'm using Berry's 115 grain round nose. It's just simple 115 grain round nose bullet. All right, so my powder's ready to go. My bullets are ready to go. My primers are ready to go. Now on to the touchy subject for all the sensitive expert reloaders. Got my clean brass and my one shot lubricant. <laughs> Here we go. Shake it up. Get you a one gallon Ziploc bag. I promise this is not gonna hurt you. I know you're sensitive, but it's not gonna hurt you. Spray some in the bag. Doesn't take much. Grab a hundred casings. Just gonna move it around a little bit. All right, we're ready to load. Take my first casing, put it in the first stage. When I pull this lever down, there's a little pin right here. That's my D primer. It's gonna go through and it's gonna push out the spent casing. And it's going to resize the casing. All right. Once I pull it down, when I push back up, I want to push my lever forward and that's going to seat my new primer, which is right there, into the casing, just like this. Push forward. Now I got a new primer in my casing. From there, I'm gonna spin Now that first one is in my powder drop stage and it's going to flare the edge of my casing so I could set a bullet on there. Taking another casing, that one actually is already deprimed, but I'll drop that in there. So my first one is going to get deprimed and a new primer pushed in. My second one over here is going to get powder and a little flare at the top of the casing. All you experts are probably gonna eat me up in the comments. I don't know all the specific exact scientific terms, but I know what I'm doing. We're all right. We're gonna make bullets. So I'm gonna spin this again. Now this one over here has powder. It's ready for a bullet. This one over here is gonna get powder. Gotta add another casing in there. This time I'm adding a bullet. Ready to go. Gonna spin again. Bullet is seated. It's going to get a crimp now. This last stage, once I pull the lever, it's gonna crimp that flare that I got on there at the powder drop, and it's gonna crimp it to hold that bullet in place. So I'm gonna add another casing to stage one, and another bullet at stage three. While I'm doing this, I constantly check to make sure powder dropped. One of the other worst things that could possibly happen is you're reloading and you think you dropped powder in that second stage and you didn't. And then you end up with a completed round. Let's say there was actually no powder in there. The problem with that is if you try to chamber this round with no powder in there, you have a primer, it looks like a regular bullet. If you're out at the range and let's just say, hypothetically, you started rapid firing, what's gonna happen with this round that has no powder in it is that primer can possibly have enough power to push that bullet out of the casing and lodge it stuck in your barrel. And then that very next round that you go to shoot is gonna blow up your gun because this bullet is stuck in your barrel and then you try and shoot another bullet through it, it can be a nasty situation. So when you're reloading, you have to make sure you're actually getting powder drops in your rounds and that they're the right size powder drops for whatever it is that you're loading. That's one of the scarier things when it comes to reloading ammunition. So anyways, got my first round. This one's done, it's ready to go. Not quite though. What I'm gonna do is take my digital calipers, check my overall length, make sure this is zeroed out. I'm at 
1.118. This is set perfect for my guns. Some people do different sizes and 1.118 chambers perfectly into my handguns. That's what I'm going to continue to do. So another thing I want to do is grab my case gauge, drop it in there. It dropped in perfect, nice and smooth. Show you again, just like that. It's smooth. It sits just a little low in there and I believe that's what it's supposed to do, but it comes right out. Like I said, this is like a mock representation of a barrel for a nine millimeter handgun. It'll work. If I were to take my barrel out of my gun, it should do the same thing. Matter of fact, I'll do that just for the sake of the video. It's my XD9 subcompact. I love this little gun. Typically carry my Glock 19, but this is a nice summertime gun if I'm wearing shorts or whatever. So I don't think I could show unloading it on camera, so I'm not going to. Do a quick safety check. Good to go. All right, so here's my barrel for my XD9 subcompact. That's perfect. That's what you're looking for. Just to show, this is my bullet that I just made. And here's one of my hollow point carry rounds, defense rounds. Same thing. Exactly what I'm looking for. It goes in smooth and it comes out smooth. It doesn't get hung up on anything. So I know my completed round is good to go. Let me put my carry gun back together in case somebody tries to run up on me while I'm loading my ammunition. Let's push out this hunter rounds. That, my friends, is 100 rounds of 9mm ammunition, ready to go to the range. So beautiful, ain't it? Alright guys, so that's how I reload my 9mm ammunition. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, turn notifications on. I really appreciate it. I'm always open to like legit constructive criticism. So if there's anything you guys think that I should do as far as my reloading ammunition, by all means, go ahead and sound off, but also keep in mind uh, for you sensitive ones that there is more than one way to skin a cat. Everybody knows that saying. Also, leave in the comments if there's other videos you guys wanna see. I'm open to ideas. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I plan on doing other stuff geared towards the political aspect of our Second Amendment rights. I may do some reviews. I may do some reaction videos to like defense scenarios. Um, when it comes to like CCW stuff. I hope you guys got something good out of the video. Catch you guys on the next one.